when Christians have been oppressed, such as in Iraq, those Christians took up arms to defend their community, okay? For me, defending justice is an expression of the kingdom of God. I, I would, I would, where I come from... So you don't believe that there's a connection between the kingdom of God and justice? Thank you. Just shall live by faith. Right. So if justice there is if, if there is a connection between justice and the kingdom of God, is fighting for justice an expression of the kingdom of God? I cannot see the Holy Spirit leading you to the weapon. You didn't answer my question. I, you, need, you need to get under the broader concept of the No, I'll, uncle, I'll ask you again. No, you have just I, I, said... I'm Sam, okay? So, uh, Sam, 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 you have just said that, 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 fight, that justice and the kingdom of God are linked, right? And I agree with you, they are. So, is fighting for justice an expression of the kingdom of God? That's the question I'm asking. talking with me taking up a weapon to kill somebody. I, 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 I'll, I'll ask the question again, Sam. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for an explanation of the question. Right, so let's, let's, let, let's, you, you agree with me that what ISIS did in Iraq and Syria was wrong, right? That was injustice. So, if a Christian in those regions picks up a weapon to defend what is morally just, i.e. his family, his community, his friends, is that an expression of the kingdom of God? Or, no, no, or have no, they morally I, sinned? No, no, or have they a, morally it's a, sinned? It's a man defending his family. Uh, in the why do you separate the, real life from in the that? Pursuit, I would do the same. In the pursuit would, of the religious. kingdom of God, the spread it's of the kingdom religious of God, idea. it is not done by violence. You've not answered my question. No, I'm answering the question because you've not addressed that point. Are you telling me the kingdom of God can be pursued by violence? Right, I am Questions. saying, yes, Questions. I will answer the question. And I will answer your question in a way that you didn't answer mine. A Christian in a situation where they are being violently persecuted, as we saw in real life in Iraq and Syria, where they pick up a rifle to defend their church, which is their community, their family, they are doing something that is just. And that is an expression of the kingdom of God. So yes things. is the answer I to the question. Say that Jesus says my kingdom is not of this world, otherwise my servants would fight. Tell me what that means. What it means is that the kingdom of God is invading the present. That the rule of God is not something that is of this world, because this world is caught in sin and in rebellion to God. And that kingdom is invading this world through the church. Through the Holy Spirit and the Gospel. Right. I've lived through 40 years of religious violence in Northern Ireland. Christians pursuing, I've had relatives murdered. If you lived there for 40 years as I have, you wouldn't be advocating your own. Brother, brother, you firstly, 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 let's be clear. Firstly, let's be clear. Firstly, let's be clear. First be clear. Let's be clear. Brother, can I speak? Can I speak? Can I speak? Firstly, can I speak? Firstly, I'm not advocating religious violence. I am answering a question that you have asked. Secondly, so just to be clear, since I have now been characterized as advocating religious violence, I do not advocate religious violence. This is not a talk in which I am seeking to justify anyone using violence against the law. So let's be clear about that. But what I am saying, you don't look convinced, what I am so. saying, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Also, you characterize, matter. you characterize it Northern Ireland matter. wrongly. That is not religious communities fighting one another. That's two forms of nationalism fighting one another. You're Irish wrong. Republican nationalism and unionist yes. nationalism. No, 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 it, 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 had it's, no, no, it had its no, no, roots I've in. There. there are Catholics that work in the police force, and there are I've unionists been. now who have got the Irish passport because they believe no. in staying inside the EU yes. so there is not What's it is not folly? about religion What's it's about folly? it's about nationalism it's and not. and those Christians who advocate nationalism are going against scripture the scripture doesn't teach nationalism the Catholic Church was involved the, scripture, the, the scriptures I know that for the scriptures fact. do not 
justify any form of nationalism. And those Christians who identify themselves by some national identity are going against the clear teaching of scripture. There is no such thing as a nation state in the Bible and there's no such thing as identifying yourself with a nation state's agenda in the scriptures. Right. But I am standing within the tradition of the church that is 2,000 years old, that has been taught again and again by Saint Augustine, it was taught by uh, Thomas Aquinas, it was even taught, you know, you, you find arguments for it in John, um, John Knox, Calvin, Luther, none of these people had the view of the Anabaptists, which is this idea of absolute pacifism. Absolute pacifism is, the, in, is, is, is an error. It has gone astray. You can't teach moral pacifism as a moral obligation for all Christians because that isn't the teaching of the Christian faith. Right. Well, all I would say is one thing and then I'll leave you for okay? <laughs> Jesus. That's the second time. Second coming. You're like Paul. Jesus. And finally. And then he goes on for like four my, more chapters. Finally, my brother and sister. Yeah. Finally. Jesus said, put down your sword. My kingdom no, is not. He said, buy a sword. He, what? he said, buy a sword. Is there contradictions in the book? Right. No, no, the brother's, the brother's just misunderstanding the text. Will thou restore the kingdom no, at this Hold time. on one second. Hold on. Tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with the Holy Spirit. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What does he actually let me say to his followers? That you asked about Andy? Uh, it's William. William, William. Close, close that's enough. a good name. <laughs> let me go out and quote him first that you missed actually in the commission go you into all the world and preach the gospel <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit when did they first do that they did that at pentecost and what did peter say well actually they did that before pentecost but no, at they, pentecost, did, they didn't well, they did go out two by two into the towns and villages yeah, preaching no, the kingdom of god the ascension yes yes yeah. well, when was the first time it was preached when what was preached sorry the gospel of jesus the legacy of the gospel men and brethren what shall we do right after they were convicted by the holy spirit peter says repent and be baptized in jesus name for the remission of your sins yes and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost and i don't dispute the, any of that for the promises on well that's the gospel i don't dispute any that's of that the gospel i don't he didn't get up with a sword and say let's get the amen romans. i agree let's, with that let's, let's get the romans out they've taken over our nation no 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 you're, again you you're, you're creating a false dichotomy you're trying to say that because I deal with the realities of the world and I try to think through as a Christian, how do we deal with situation X or situation Y that I'm betraying the gospel? For me, there is a confluence, a synergy between the gospel and dealing with real life issues. It is the kind of dogma dogmatism that we see in too many parts of the church in which people try to separate the gospel and dogmatic purity with the sulliness and the dirtiness of real life. And that isn't my Christianity. I follow, I follow Pauline theology and I don't think he was like that. Yeah, but, but I'm sorry, Pauline theology, they deal with the real world. Because his world... Is slavery, hold on, is slavery compatible with the gospel? Tell me. No, it isn't. It isn't compatible with the teachings of the gospel. I thought you might have had another idea right. there. But, but I'm asking you, do you agree with me that, that slavery is not... Slavery. I don't right, I hold on, the gospel hold on. Frees but men. did Paul give advice to slaves? Well, tell me. Yes, he did. He told slaves to be obedient to their masters so that the gospel is not... Um, and he does it in Timothy so that the gospel is not brought into disrepute but to conduct your, right so hold on one second hold on one second so paul whose ethics and values of the kingdom contradict the paradigm of slavery is giving advice to slaves about obeying their masters why because of real politic because of the reality on the ground because the dirtiness of sin means that when you engage with it you have to infuse the hole with yeast to leaven it and to rise it. But that means that you have to engage with the, the, the real politics. And just quoting, just quoting text of scripture to, to present yourself as dogmatically pure 
and then dismissing engagement with reality. No, 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 no. stuff here, okay. here. I'm not, <laughs> right. no, 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 you're, no way. you're using mild abuse as an argument, you're smarter than that. So tell no, me, bro, tell, yeah. tell me, bro, tell me, bro, tell me, bro. I don't no, I'll leave it there, I'll leave, leave it there. All right, Good no, it was a real pleasure to speak yeah, to you, it's great to meet a man of God who knows his scripture. I'm just looking for a gun there, no, it's not gun. You characterize me wrongly, you've missed let me be clear, right? Okay. Right? I am not advocating violence. Thank you. What I am saying though, is that in some circumstances, the cause of the kingdom of God aligns with the use of violence because to do otherwise creates such incredible injustice that to not fight against certain evil to such morally evil you become complicit in the evil you allow exceptional circumstance which exceptional. We, we, we would not build a doctrine on nazis and that's the important no, thing. no yeah, but no, these no, these are not agree. mythical thought experiments the nazis you. were a reality in history and so were isis i have not got a problem with the morality of a just war neither do it's i and that's what i'm arguing it's the purity of the gospel and the preaching of that gospel in its purity Without but the, the kingdom of God was what we were talking about yeah. and we were talking about how the kingdom of God in the pursuit of justice because justice and the kingdom of God align they have to therefore in certain circumstances where justices have, injustices have to be corrected through no other means than by force then that means that in that use of violence, you are using violence for the kingdom of God. And that's the point I was trying to make to you. We leave it there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, God bless you. It's a real pleasure to meet someone who knows the scriptures. Okay, yeah. nephew, nephew. Thank you on that. <laughs>